Hello Internet! Today I'm joined by two awesome human beings to roleplay through a bit of a radio theater. With us, we have Nikolai, who is, uh, after leaving a, a life of educator, traveler and shaman level 99, decided that enough is enough and got himself a 9-to-5 job in an office. Hello, Nico. Hello. And with us, we also have uh, Bogna, who is a scout leader, mother of two dragons and is studying in Denmark to be able to contribute with 38% of her salary. Uh, to taxes like the rest of us. Hello, Wagner. Hello. Um, my wife has advised me not to try to be funny, just to be funny, not to force it. Uh, so the worst that can happen today is uh, awkward silences. Uh, but feel free to laugh through the experience. Uh, have you ever done anything like this before? Mm, not quite. No. Not really. That's my husband's domain. So the exercise is simple. Just follow the instructions and um, hope that I don't forget to press record. It is the most heartbreaking story ever told. Esteban Gonzalez is today with us. Esteban, are you certain this is the most heartbreaking story ever? I believe so. It's the story of my grandfather's dad. Um, with all due respect, I think I've heard more heartbreaking situations. That's just the beginning. My grandpa passes away. Bless his soul. Sadness in the family. The funeral is arranged. Me and my father are transported in the hearse with a coffin on the way to the graveyard. And as soon as it drives from the chapel, Mr. Bonkers, our family cat, <sighs> our poor family cat, crosses the road and... Uh, in front of the hearse. Don't tell me Mr. Bonkers also died? No, no. In fact, that was the only happy moment in this story. The driver hits the brakes and Mr. Bonkers is saved. But the coffin with my grandpa slides with violence in the back and kills my father with a clean hit to the head. My grandpa killed my father. Can you imagine the headlines in the newspapers? Well, we can't really say it was your grandfather who killed your father. That's true. We, we can't say it to others. It's a family tragedy. We should, it should stay in the privacy of, uh, of our family. We've always been a, a family with good relations. There were no indications that my grandpa would murder my father. Uh, I don't think we can say he murdered he, your father. He did. He did. And uh, to take no risks, on the day of my father's funeral, I locked Mr. Bonkers away and put on my bicycle helmet, just in case my father would come sliding from the back to kill me, like his father had done with him. The trip went well. At the graveyard, I was one of the people who carries the, the coffin to the final resting place. It was July, hot afternoon, my hands were a little bit sweaty. The coffin slips from my hand and lands on my foot. My father broke my foot. Imagine the headlines. Esteban, your story is strange, but I'm not sure if it's the most heartbreaking. It's not heartbreaking. My grandfather dies, kills my father, who then breaks my foot. We have suffering, we have death, we have the fracture of metatarsal bone, which takes up to six months to heal, and that's not all. I go to the hospital to get my foot on a cast. And at some point, there's this lady who waves at me from a distance. I wave back, only to realize she's waving at the gentleman sitting behind me. I found myself a total fool in public. It hadn't happened yet in your story. No, and it's not common that I put myself in those situations. So in conclusion, we have death of my grandpa, death of my father, broken foot, and being a fool at the hospital. To try to minimize the shame, of the moment, I decide to continue to wave in the direction of the lady as if to say, no, no, I'm actually waving at someone behind you, lady. In this case, some young doctor who was standing there. So anyway, this happened on my way home. I'm a bit moody, saddened, searching for a bit of comfort. So I send an SMS to my wife simply saying, I love you with all my heart. As it happens, the last person I texted was the funeral director and the SMS goes to him by mistake. Before I rectify my mistake, the funeral director replies, I also have feelings for you. Meet me at the mortuary by the end of the day. I thought to myself, better not reply now and make things worse. When I get home, my foot is very, very itchy inside of the cast. I tried everything. First, I tried some talk powder. Then I tried to scratch with a wooden spoon from the kitchen. It was a bad idea. The sweat and the powder created a white paste that accumulated in the wooden spoon. I ended up taking a nap. In the meantime, my wife arrives and wakes me up by saying, honey... I tried this bechamel sauce you had in the wooden spoon and it was a bit bitter. And I tell her, cariño, that was not bechamel sauce. It was sweat and powder. She panicked. 
and I and said, what if I'm allergic? She picked up my phone to call the emergency line. But suddenly, her face changes, and she asks, Esteban, are you in love with the funeral director? And I tell her, no, Karinho, it was a mistake. Anyway, we arrive to the emergency room, and the doctor who receives us is the one that I have been waving earlier to avoid being a fool. And he says, I noticed that you were waving at me generously earlier, and I want you to know that I'm single, but I'm not looking for anything serious. My wife snaps. So you're in love with the funeral director and this doctor, Esteban. Lord, take me away from this betrayal. No, don't tell me she died also. No, she got her stomach pumped and the Lord didn't take her, which in a way is also heartbreaking because it was a special request that she had for our Lord Jesus Christ. So guys, that was our first... Uh, Episode of Rated Theater. How do you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it, it was a, 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 a experience full of surprises, good ones. Good. Yes. Did you find uh, Esteban a little over the top, or is he a, a reasonable guy? Reasonable guy, absolutely. Yeah. Reasonable. I was I was touched by the bechamel part, mm. like the powder and the like. Oh, it's so it was be so you, difficult to wash it off from this wooden spoon. You are a big fan of bechamel. Yes, but not, not on wooden spoons. Not on wooden I spoons. I love bechamel. Very well. All right, let's proceed to um, our uh, our second attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Today with us in the studio, we have a Nobel Prize of Pedagogy, Professor Svante Gonzalez. Professor. Is pedagogy the, a new Nobel Prize category? Yes, yes, it is. And don't bother Googling it. It's very new. Uh, that sounds slightly suspicious. But what discoveries do you claim in your field? Many. The Nobel Prize winners are usually very focused on their own fields. And that's a very narrow way of thinking. My discipline is relevant across the sciences, and it aims to help people understand the poetry of our everyday experiences. Professor, I'm still very unclear of your field of studies. Could you give us an example? Very well. Pay attention because this experiment is something that you can accomplish in the safety of your home. But is it safe? Perfectly safe. So, this experiment involves knowledge of mathematics, physics, chemistry, in particular, high levels of dopamine and norepinephrine that makes us giddy, euphoric and energetic, what the common folk call love. No, so, by chemistry you mean love? I can see that you're an attentive student. I'm sure you will learn something new today. But let's start with the mathematics. Where does it appear in your experiment? The experiment requires a certain knowledge of the equivalence of liters and kilograms. One liter of a liquid weighs the same as one kilogram. I assume you remember this from your early days of school. So, to start the procedure, the kind listener must first go to the nearest bathroom. That is unaccepted. Unexpected. <laughs> also unexpected. <laughs> and then what? Go to the bathroom and get on the scale and note down your weight. After that, proceed to pee. Pee is relevant for the experiment? It also works with other body rejects, but today we are focusing on pee. Hmm. We are focusing on the pee? We are focused on the pee. So go to the bathroom, note your weight. Pee. And after that, you go on the scale again and take your weight again. This is the crucial step. I tried this experiment myself before coming to the studio this morning. I checked my weight and it was 88.7 kilograms. After, then after peeing, I checked my weight again and it was 87.9. Uh, professor, but what is the point of all of this? The first mathematical step is to subtract the weight post pee to the weight pre pee. So 88.7 minus 87.9 equals 0 0.8 kilograms. The weight I lost because of peeing. But what is the percentage in relation to my weight before I peed? Ah, here it comes. What in math we call rule of three. 88.7 is 100%, so 0 0.8 is X. Therefore, my percentage of weight loss is 0 0.8 times 100 divided by 88.7. It results in 0 0.9. I have lost 0.9% of weight from peeing. Where does the chemistry or love, as we say, come into this equation? It is precisely now. After doing these calculations that the kind listener will, uh, will have then to approach a loved one, for example, a spouse, and ask, honey, did you love me 10 minutes ago? 
I'm still missing the point of all of this. And when they say, yes, I did love you 10 minutes ago, then we reveal to our spouse, my dear, I have a confession to make. There is no, there's no point in hiding this. They usually react by saying, what is it? What is it? Please tell me. So we conclude, honey, 0.9% of what you loved 10 minutes ago was P. You see the brilliance of my calculations. And the loved one usually says, hmm? So we have to explain further. I use the scale, then P, then scale again, rule of thirds, percentage, 0.8 of what you loved was P. And at this point, the loved one usually starts to get cranky. This seems reasonable. Of course, because they were caught in love with P. <laughs> and if they show that they are cranky by saying, you really like to bother other people, you can reply, yes, but at least I'm not in love with P. <laughs> Ten minutes ago, you loved me, while 0.9% was P. And if they remain cranky and say, ah, that was 10 minutes ago. Now I'm not sure if I love you. Now this is the cherry on top of my experiment. So you can say, of course, because now I'm 0% P. Maybe that's why you're in doubt if you still love me. Let me drink this bottle of water and you will fall in love with me again. And this is why I won the Nobel Prize. That was uh, the number two of uh, today's um, attempts of comedy. What do you think? This was a pleasant experience, I think. Um, P and love, always a pleasant experience, I think, I to talk about. I love um, peeing, actually. Mm, it's a good feeling. It feels good. Yeah. It feels good. Yeah. The relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole Part pro of you. The is process. Gone. Yeah. It's good. I don't know why, but I, um, I always tend to go to the bathroom and have the be the brightest of ideas. So there's a certain relationship there. Yeah. And P is actually being generous to our listeners. It could have been worse. Much worse. Yeah. I heard worse once. But no, let's not get into that. It's a long time ago. Yeah. But, but if you think, for example, of babies mm. and how mothers and fathers love their babies and the amount of poo they generate... <laughs> that's Fathers in, and mothers, in, or babies? in percentage, that's it's that's a huge amount of two digits for yeah, sure. That's yeah. a huge amount of love that yeah. they will be confronted. Very well. Let's uh, let's continue now in a different tone. Abnormal Studios in Supernatural Encounters. It's a new reflection space here at Paranormal Radio Studios with our resident commenta commentator, the Bishop Bento Gonzalez. Bishop Bento, what do you bring us today? Good morning. Today I bring a story of an exorcism. This happened in 1987. I was still a humble priest. I was called to a small town parish because of a man that was possessed by a demon. Very well, I arrive at his house and the man is tied to the bed. As usual, I pull out my Bible and I say, Demonic spirit, if you are listening, leave this poor man alone. And I hear a voice saying, Ah, that's what I wanted. I can't find my way out. And I say, who is speaking? Here is the demon that is possessing this man. Good morning. Ah, good morning. Um, so what seems to be the problem here? I'm not sure, but I can't leave him. I was supposed to be out two days ago. My wife must be getting worried. Incredible. I, I never had a case like this. Please continue. So I say, so how are we going to resolve this, my friend? Can't you call someone from your organization to remove you from there? <sighs> no, I'm actually a freelancer. Jesus Christ. How are we going to solve this pickle? Hold on for a moment. Thank you for waiting. Please, can you tell me your ID number? Oh, I don't have it with me at the moment. So you come to possess without the documentation? Please hold. Thank you for waiting. Listen, I can't find you in any database. Uh, it makes sense because it's the first time that I'm possessing. What do you mean the first time? How long have you been a demon? Uh, since February. I used to work as a contractor, but 
The economy is in recession, so I thought, let me try possession. So instead of staying home feeling useless, I thought, I'll give this a try. And you decided to possess this poor man as your first try? Usually demons like to start by possessing an electronic device or a house pet. You have to work your way up not skip steps. And here's um, where we have once again uh, what people often complain about the government. Lack of investment in re-education of an unemployed. Well put. So I proceed. Demon, I compel you in the name of our Lord. Leave this man. Well, uh, still stuck. That is not helping, Father. Hmm. Then I will read a bit of the Old Testament. Pay attention. One day, Jesus was walking near Galilee, and a Pharisee approached him. What is this you are preaching to these poor people, Jesus? Hmm. Demon, are you gone? No, I'm still here. But now I'm curious about your story. And then, what did you do, Bishop Bento? Well, I thought to myself, I need to get creative. So I said... Listen up, demon. I have a feeling you don't really know how to lay wood floors. What? Who told you that? So, I was checking your reviews. It seems you misled some of the clients on the final price. What? I never did that. I have 22 years of experience as a contractor. If the clients change their mind midway through, then that's... That still requires a change of price. What can I do? Ah, that sounds odd. I could even see some complaints that you had the habit of drinking on the job. Listen here, you little churchman. Don't make me go there and... Poof! And he was gone. That was it. <laughs> I still have the demon voice. <laughs> yes. Um, so, how would you rate your experience from uh, four to five? Yeah, something about that. Um. Three very different stories. I, I think in the first one, I with the name Esteban Gonzalez. I had uh, um, imagined one of these, what do you call them? They have in Latin America these TV shows. Uh, like soap operas? Uh, yeah, like soap opera kind of thing. It's a very visual name. You Est can, you can visualize Esteban. Yeah. Exactly. It already sounds dramatic. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of getting into that mood. Um, but that's not to say I'm disappointed. Just, ah, it was something else. And then there was P, so it was also yeah, a bit romantic. Yeah, yeah. Um, were they all related? No, I, I, mean, I just uh, I just thought that I've never been super proud of my surname Gonzalez, but then I realized it's actually one of the most common names like in Latin America, and especially mm -hmm. in Mexico. And I just thought it's one of many. This could be this is a, an anybody person, mm -hmm. right? It's a name that mm -hmm. could mean it's just another person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Why not? But uh, now now you've done it. Now you've experienced. You've been um, uh, at my will. Through a, a script, and uh, was it easy? Yes and no. I um, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was worried that I will laugh too much. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> we we do have a tendency to hold back the laugh, right? Yeah. And in these cases, it's fine to just giggle out. Mm. Um, I I got lost a little bit here. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, where am I? I'm totally lost. It's a lot of uh, things, a lot of words, but um, but then I. I went back on track. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me that was the uh, the only sort of really challenging part, not really being sure what to do there. But we managed well. Yes. Alrighty. We have one child in the background uh, asking water, <laughs> <laughs> demanding water. It's her right. It's, it's, so it's, it's a family business after I all. I think it's, so uh, you know, it's around. a good good time to uh, to end end our show. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, um. Thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to this um, alternative uh, podcast with uh, Radio Theater. And thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for having me as well. Thank you for participating. And um, maybe if I uh, get inspired and continue to write, then we can uh, we can attempt this at some other point. It was uh, it was quite fair, quite fast. Yeah. So, Give me a call. Yes, thank Anytime. you. Thank you.